doing is uh, we're doing uh, metallic bonding, but I want to start off the big picture, okay? Where the big picture is, is that... Um, Wait, Mr. P, don't work at a different one. Well, we're gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you questions only on yours. Oh, okay. All right, All right um, in metallic bonding, so let's start with the big picture, matter. All right, matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. space. Yeah, so it has mass and takes up space. And if you divide matter down to its most simplest unit that has properties, you get to the atom. And there are different types of atoms, all right? Oxygen, hydrogen, all those, those are, and they're listed on the periodic table. Uh, but most atoms are stable or unstable. Yeah, most atoms are unstable. That means, and why are they unstable? What made them unstable in the first place? <laughs> yeah, they don't have enough valence electrons. They need eight or they need a full level. So yes, very good. So they don't have enough valence electrons. And so when you're unstable, that makes you high energy or low energy? High. High energy, very good, yes. If you're high energy, that nature doesn't prefer that. So it prefers to put them in uh, a chemical bond, which would make them what? Low. Low energy. And we've already talked about two different types of chemical bonds, ionic and covalent, all right? Um, and so, um, like for instance, carbon and carbon or carbon and hydrogen, like this wood right here on this desk, all right, it's gonna be a covalent bond, all right? But the salt right here for my salt shaker is uh, a metal and a non-metal. All right, and they do a what type of bond? Ionic, all right? But there's one other type of bond and it's obvious that this other bond exists because your desk, all right? Your desk is, if you look at that metal portion on your desk, that metal frame, all right? That's, that is metal and metal. We, ha we haven't done a bond for metal and metal. We've done non-metal, non-metal, metal, non-metal, but this is metal, metal. All right, so what type of bond will that be? It is starting with Metallic bond. Yeah, metallic bond. So we are now introducing metallic bond. Another day we did that activity and I was like, you know, that we haven't talked about this. Cause like, it's really interesting because <laughs> like if I look at this wall right behind me or right here, all right, this wall has a lot of silicon and oxygen. Silicon's a non-metal, oxygen is a non-metal. So, so that's going to mean it's going to do a covalent bond. And again, this, and it has also some metals mixed into it. So it's got some ionic bonds into it. And so it's got a lot of different types of bonds. In fact, I mean, everything has got chemical bonds in it because like you and me, we're not one atom. We're lots and billions and billions and trillions of atoms that hold us to together. All right. And so, but we're a lot of which type of bonds? A lot, we got a lot of carbon and carbon and hydrogen and oxygen. And that tells you what type of bonding we have a lot of. Covalent bonds. Now we're a lot of covalent bonds, all right? And so you're kind of see everything around me has some type of chemical bond. Because if I can see it, that means it's made of a lot of atoms. If I can see it, it's made of a lot of atoms. All right, and so that's, um, that's what we want to emphasize. So we're hitting on metallic bonds. All right, if you had metallic bonds, raise your hand if you had that section right here. David, I think you had that. All right, yes, yes. All right, if you have your phone out, put it up. I don't want to see it out on the desk. I don't want to see it in a uh, lap. I don't want to see earbuds either. So I don't want to see any of that, all right? All right, so, um, so metallic bonds. And let me give you out this sheet. Let me pause this video and give out this sheet. Mm -hmm. That's all on here. All right. So metallic bonds, okay? We're going over metallic bonds. Uh, what is a metallic bond? Metal and metal. Yes, it's, be it's a between the metal and metal. And Ruby, what is a metallic bond? Yeah, it's uh, uh, an attraction between the metal cations and uh, what charge do metal cations have? Same with you, Ruby. No, they don't. They actually have a what charge, David? They have a 
charge. Yes, they have a positive charge. All right, they have a positive charge. And I have a picture right over here. I'm gonna to try to pull up. All right, metallic bonding. Okay, this is a great, you know, I like using this picture. All right, there we go. All right, uh, they have a positive charge and they have those valence electrons around them, okay? Um, how many electrons does it take to become stable? Um, right here, take them, Piper. Eight, all right? <laughs> and uh, metals typically have not many valence electrons. And so what they do is they share their valence electrons with each other, all right? They share them and they use a certain word. They share them, they don't share them like covalent bonds. They share them how, there's a, they said there's a common what, Ruby. Yeah, it's a common what of electrons. David, it's a common what of electrons? Um, it's a shared Yeah, well, that makes it sound like it's just the same as, uh, as a, a covalent bond. And so it's different. How is it different? Piper, how is the metallic bond different from a uh, covalent bond? I'll pause it for a second. All right, and so with a covalent bond, like water, all right, it, sh it puts those electrons, all right, and those electrons are just shared between the oxygen and the hydrogen, all right? On the other hand, when we have like, let's say aluminum, aluminum has three valence electrons. I'm gonna draw aluminum, all right, All right, so each of them have three valence electrons. All right, and so these electrons are not belonging to just one of the atoms, they actually belong to all of them, that is, a, that's what's the deal. Whereas when you do like water, those valence electrons belong to just those two atoms. They don't share them amongst the miles. And so what a metallic bond, it becomes stable by the, the group, the pool, having a pool of valence electrons, all right? What makes a stronger metallic bond, Ruby? David, what makes a stronger metallic bond? Um, that they all share the same electrons. No, Piper. Stronger metallic bonds are formed by, if we look over here, if this uh, one of these has a stronger um, metallic bond, which of these has the strongest metallic bonds? Mm -hmm. Aluminum, that's correct. Why, that's correct, why? Yeah, and how many you have to be, have to become stable again? Remember, you have to have how many to become stable? Eight. Which one is closer to becoming stable out of all of those? Magnesium. Not magnesium. It's got to have eight. All right. So this one's got more valence electrons, so that makes it more able to be close to stable. So they are all sharing those valence electrons and makes it more able to be stable. And so that's why aluminum is more stable than any of these here. Uh, sodium is, has only one valence electron per atom. So they need how many again to get become stable? Eight, it needs, they, even if they're sharing them, there's not enough, there's not enough. It's almost like having one piece of bread for a family of six for all day to eat. 
that's just not going to work. One piece of bread for everybody. There's never going to be enough. You can, and stuff. And then magnesium is like two pieces of bread for everybody to eat all day. All right. Yeah, you need lots more. That's not going to work. Okay. And so these are very unstable compounds. In fact, sodium and magnesium are so unstable that you do not find them in nature by themselves. They're always only in a compound. Uh, you can get, I can buy sodium, but they have to store it under a specific oil so that it won't explode and react. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. They will, when the, first off, what they do when it's sodium and, well, they don't do a bond together. They're going to be so, sodium and sodium. Well, they can do a bond together. Yeah. Sodium, sodium is going to be a metallic bond because it's metal, metal. Magnesium, magnesium, me, me, uh, metallic bond. And the reason they are, again, but they're going to be weak metallic bonds because they have so few valence. Electron. So what makes a stronger metallic bond, David? Um, <laughs> what about valence electrons? No, come on. What, what makes a strong metallic bond, Viper? Yeah, it's gonna make it stronger, but what is it gonna make it? How is it, how can having None of these actually have exact full amounts, but having what? Uh, Ruby. <laughs> yeah, having more or less. More valence electrons makes you more stable. All right, more electrons to share between each other makes you more stable. All right, and so that's, that's why aluminum will have, that's why gold and, and platinum are so strong is because they have uh, so many valence electrons to share amongst themselves. And that makes them where they can be stable by themselves. They don't have to combine with them. They can combine with only other gold atoms, All right? It's weak in the way of not as malleable it bends easy, but it's uh, it doesn't react real well. It's actually gold is very stable, very stable. In fact, sometimes they coat things in like uh, the space, uh, and the things that are going to space with some of it with gold foiling because it doesn't um, it doesn't uh, rust or it doesn't have any reaction with any type of the oxygen and stuff of like that. So that's why they go there. All right, interesting stuff. All right, um, so. Uh, continuing on, um, one other thing we need to mention right here. Let's, uh, but I'm gonna pause the video for a quick second here, or get over here. You can see the real the, the, why metals do this here. All right, uh, metals typically, if you hit like, let's say you hit something that's not a metal, like a um, salt, a salt crystal. Salt crystals are gonna be like this. They're gonna have a structure like this: NaCl, Na. Cl, Na, Cl, Na, Cl, Na. So that's the before. And let's say I have a hammer, even though the hammer would be, and it hits it. This is part of the hammer that hit it. All right. All right. When you hit it, it's going to shift those atoms. It's going to shift their position. All right. And so now I have Cl, Na, R. I didn't mean to make that small. R, N, A, C, L, N, A. And then I move this over, N, A, C, L. After you hit them, they shift positions. When you have N, A next to N, A, what will it do to each other? Will it attract or will it repel? Repel. So what's going to And then C, L, C, L is going to also repel. So that's going to cause the, if you hit a, a, a salt crystal, if you hit with a hammer, it's going to do what? Yeah, break apart. And it's going to break apart and you're going to damage it. All right. But if you hit a, a metal, and so this is our metallic, metallic bonding, our malleable. There it is. All right. That's, that's the image I want. All right, 
On the other hand, if you hit a metal that they're surrounded by those valence electrons. So those prevent the atoms from getting next to each other. And so therefore they don't repel each other and doesn't break. It's almost like they're like a buffer or a cushion that prevents them from breaking. So if you see this picture right here, they're surrounded before it gets hit by the hammer. You can see all the uh, valence electrons. And once it gets hit, though there are still valence electrons between the atoms. That's not the case for sodium chloride. When it gets hit, those valence electrons, there's no buffer here. So the atoms get right next to other atoms and therefore they break apart. And so the metal allows them to do that right here. That's what happens with this here. I'm trying to find my hammer, I had a hammer out. I just like to bang on things when I get a chance. There we go. So if I hit my desk, all right, there's one. All right, my desk did not shatter. All right, but if I hit my glass, sorry. <laughs> all right, all right, the chemical bonding's differently there, okay? It's definitely different. Um, but the point is, that's what we want to emphasize. One other thing about this is that uh, since they have this type of chemical bond, that also allows them to do what, Piper? With uh, what does that allow them to do with electricity? Why? Why can metals conduct electric current? And things that have covalent bonds typically don't conduct. <laughs> How come, what do you mean the flow charge? How, how, how does that happen? Whereas it doesn't happen in say molecules like water. How come it doesn't flow through molecules like water? How come it can flow through metals like these, but it doesn't flow through molecules like water? Yeah, because of the what? The, yeah, the valence electron pool. Those electrons don't belong to just one atom. They belong to all the atoms. So they go from atom to atom to atom to atom. So you can basically, and what electricity is, it's the flow of charge, a flow of charged particles and electrons are charged particles. That's what makes electricity is the flow of those electrons, right? And so if you can, if the electrons don't have to stick with a certain atom, then go from atom to atom to atom, that's electricity. All right, and so that's why electricity can go through metals, but it can't go through things like water so well. All right, and you say, well, I thought you can get electrocuted in the bathtub. Well, when you put salts in the water or even the salts off your skin, yes, you can. All right, that helps make the water more a conductor because of that. But water by itself is not, it doesn't share those electrons easily whereas the metals do, okay? Um, all right, so let's fill in our notes. All right, metallic bonds are metal cations that do what with their valence electrons? And share their valence electrons with one another. And, and they have what we call a common what, um, Ruby? They have a common what of? Valence electrons. They have a common. David, they have a common what of valence electrons since they're they share these valence electrons together, but they're not, it's not like a covalent bond. What do they do? Yeah, it's a C of a, they have a common pool of electrons, of valence electrons. They don't belong to certain uh, certain atoms. That's why I want to emphasize that part. Um, remember, we ha metals have a uh, hyper high amount of valence electrons, or do they have a, a few amount of valence electrons? And like group one and group two, they have how many valence electrons? High amount or few, low amount? They have a low amount of valence electrons. They have few valence electrons. So they are far from being stable by themselves. 
If they don't bond with a non-metal, they will bond with another metal atom, with another metal atom. And this is metallic bonding. Transition metals, which are in groups three through 12, typically have more what, Ruby? The transition metals, which are groups three through four, have more what? Like gold, uh, silver, copper. They have more valence electrons, very good. Therefore, they have stronger metallic bonds and are more what, David? Stable. All right, alkali metals and alkaline earth metals have what type, Piper, metallic bonds? That's group one and two, like sodium and magnesium. They have what type of metallic bonds? Weak, yes, they have weak metallic bonds. They have weak metallic bonds because they have what? Piper again. Yeah, they have few valence electrons. Few valence electrons. Ah, here you go. <laughs> Making them more stable or less stable, Piper. No, they have few of them, they're less stable. All right, they are less stable. All right, all right, so you get in the concept. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm sorry, did I give you one? There you go. All right, there you go. All right, so that's the deal. I'm gonna pause the video to tell you. All right, I forgot these two here. Blank, blank, well, because of that, they allow charge or electrons to flow through them easily. Um, Ruby. They blank well because they allow charge or electrons to flow through them easily because of the pool of valence electrons. Yeah, do they uh, conduct electricity well or do they conduct electricity poorly? Um. Yes. <laughs> I, had to, I had to help with a little bit there. Conduct electricity well. That's all right. That's all right. Hey, at least, you know what? The better thing is going to be when it's on the test. The test is guess what day? Uh, conduct electricity well. Uh, electricity well. Blink. Uh, because their cations uh, and pool of valence electrons can shift positions easily without breaking. Um, David, they are what? What are they? Because their cations and pool of valence electrons can shift positions without breaking when struck. They are what? No, right over here. Pipe. Malleable, very good. All right, they are malleable. All right, malleable. That means they don't, when you hit them with a the hammer, they don't shatter. All right, let's see if you some of those points back right now. All right, um, so we already said um, Tanaya. Uh, an alloy is two or more elements that, and that in, in which one of, it's a mixture of those elements in which one of them is a what? Yes, that's correct. And staying with you, uh, bronze is an alloy between what and what? Huh? Is a bronze is an alloy between what and what? Yeah, what metals? Copper and tin. All right. All right, and we already said it's, and he's making statues, bells, propellers, and ships. Brass is an alloy between what and what, um, Tanaya? Copper and zinc. 
All right. Uh, and it's used for sometimes belt buckles, especially, um, and I want to mention what brass, a lot of times the military, if you get into the hot, sometimes there's an expression of you, he's high brass. High brass means he's high rank. Because that means a lot of the medals that you receive are brass medals. All right, brass, um, a brass military. All right, we'll just say that. brass and military. And if you look, uh, no, that's not that click on stinker. images. Here it is. All right, these are, you can see, these are the high brass. That's what they're talking about. Venezuela military brass. That means the high ranking military officials. And the brass is the uh, is the shiny metals that they have on them. You know, typically that's what the high brass means. All right, and so that brass is again belt buckles. And back when I was in Cub Scouts back in the day and Boy Scouts, brass Cub Scouts. Our belt buckle was uh, was that that was our belt buckle. It was brass. brass. It looks gold, yes. Um, that's exactly what it looks like. Brass looks like that. And it's a, it's a cheap metal. You usually recognize it. And so it's a, it is a cheap metal. All right, and so brass. All right, and so it's a cheap metal. And so you might have, like, I, my wife, had, well, we had some brass candlestick holders. And it's, it's nice, but it's not gold for sure. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, anyways, all right. Um, let's let me pause the video. To, what is it, Layla? Steel. All right, stainless steel. Matthew has iron, carbon, and what in it? And why does stainless? It has uh, chromium. Why does it have chromium in that in it? What does it help it prevent it to do? Yes, very good. Help it prevent from rusting. And I misspelled instruments here. <laughs> that is not how you spell instruments. The brass section, by the way, with instruments like trumpets and trombones, they are all made of brass. So that's the stuff like in the uh, trumpets, trombones, the French horn, all those are made of brass. And so that's what those are here. All right, next one, magnesium and aluminum alloys are strong and what? Um, Layla, light. And that's why they're used, all right? And just to give you a thought real quick, uh, one uh, iron atom, it weighs about 56 grams or for one mole of iron atoms, that's a certain amount of iron atoms, but one mole of aluminum atoms weighs only 27 grams. And so what you're seeing is that if you, that's why you make planes out of what? Yeah, aluminum, because the aluminum is half the weight of an iron atom. And actually some engines, some places are, some cars are like Hyundai in fact, Hyundai is now trying to make more uh, their engine parts out of aluminum alloys. And that's, that's a good and bad thing, right? Uh, it's aluminum, it gets you better gas mileage because it's lighter, but it may not wait, last as long. And so it's just a bad thing here, all right? Anyways, we were just trying to go over metallic bonding and I hope you got that a little bit. Okay. All right, and so let's put this in our notebook and let me stop the video.